This is section 3.5, the chain rule, content objective 2, which is to now apply the chain rule in a variety of scenarios. With example 1, we want to find the derivatives of these three composed functions. And notice that they are all going to involve the chain rule. They are also all involve the power rule applied to an inner function. So if I want to take the derivative of f, the outermost function is a cube. So we will apply the power rule and do 3 times that inner function raised to the second power times the derivative of the inner function. So the inner function remains unchanged when we have applied the power rule. And then once we've applied the power rule to that unchanged function, then we multiply at the back times the derivative of that inner function. If we do this one, right, recognize that this is just an x cubed minus 8x squared raised to the 1 half power. So the derivative will again be that outer function applied first to the inside unchanged times the derivative of the inside. Now notice I'm putting parentheses around the derivative of that inside because it has two terms. It wasn't as necessary up here because this one term with or without parentheses would still be distributed. On this one we need it around both. If we look here, again we've got that power rule and our variable this time is a y. So we'll have f prime of y equals 2 thirds times the inside function unchanged raised to that 2 thirds minus 1, which is a negative 1 third, times the derivative of the inside. Because it has multiple terms, I've got to make sure I put the inside's derivatives inside parentheses. With example 2, we are still differentiating, except this time instead of our outer function involving the power rule, the outer function is a trig rule. But the process, the chain rule, will work the same. We think about what we hit first, which is the cosine. So we take the derivative of cosine, we're applying that rule for the inside unchanged, and then at the back we multiply by the derivative of that inside. With the next one, the first function that we hit is the sine. So we'll apply the sine derivative rule, which will give us a cosine of the inside unchanged plus, or excuse me, times the derivative of that inside. And the derivative of the inside will have multiple terms. So we've got to make sure that we have parentheses around them. For the last one, again, we have a derivative with respect to y. We're hitting the tangent first, so that derivative is a secant squared of the inside unchanged. And then we multiply at the back times the derivative of the inside. Notice if we take the derivative of this, we get a 3 times a 1 half root y. Oops, excuse me. 3 times 1 half y to the negative 1 half. With our third example, we can see that the outer function is no longer a power, nor is it a trig. It is now that natural exponential. So derivatives of natural exponentials hit that exponential and leave it alone. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Notice I have parentheses around the derivative of the inside because there was more than one term. On this one, we again will see that exponential is the outermost function, so we're going to leave it alone. And then we multiply by the derivative of that power. Last one, we have f prime of v. We'll hit that e, which keeps it the same. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So derivative of v with respect to v is a 1. On this next one, I would rethink that as 2v to the 3 halves, because we have v to the 1 times v to the 1 half. We add those exponents and now take the derivative. That will give us a 3v to the 1 half. So far in this lesson, we've only been doing applications of the chain rule that involve one composition. But we can make functions significantly more complicated, either by combining composition with other operations, or by doing nested, multiple nested compositions. So let's look at some of those now and see if we can keep track of everything. With this example 4, we want to compute the derivatives of the following. And our first version, we can see, involves a product rule. And each of those products 
this each factor is going to also involve the chain rule because we've got some composition in each factor. So to take the derivative of this, just to keep things straight for myself, I'm going to create the template first. And in that template, I'm going to fill in the things that don't change. So we have the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second one times the derivative of the first. And then I'm going to think about the derivative of the second just like I did in example three. So here's an exponential raised to a polynomial. So I will hit that exponential rule first, which leaves it alone. And then I hit the power, which gives me the 15x squared. If I want to take the derivative of the first one, this is like example two. I have a trig first with its inside unchanged, and then I hit the inner polynomial, which will be a 2x. And I would leave it like this for now, just so that whoever's grading can track through your process without having to backtrack through simplification. So if we look at this one, again, keep in mind that we want to go in order with whatever um, operations or whichever functions are on the outside. So if we look here, the first thing that I see, the outermost function, is a cube. So this one is a nested chain rule with a product rule inside. So I would bring the 3 down first with the inside unchanged. and then I'd multiply by the derivative of that inside. So if we look at the inside, we can see that we have, just like in part A, a product rule. So to do the derivative of the inside, I'm going to start by putting my template and I'll have my first and my second and then here I need the derivative of my second, which is a chain rule. I hit the e first, that stays the same. And then I hit the cosine, which will be a negative sine. And if I take the derivative of the first one, I hit the sine first, which is cosine. And then I hit that inside, which is a polynomial. With our last one, we can see that the big rule on the outside is this quotient rule. So to take the derivative, I'm going to start by setting up my quotient rule template. I'll have my low d high minus my high d low over that low squared. So when I take the d high and the d low, that is when I'm going to be using the chain rule. So low d high, I take the derivative of this sine. The first thing I hit is the sine, whose derivative is cosine of the inside unchanged times the derivative of that inside. On the bottom one, the first thing I hit is the secant. So remember, and this is where a lot of people mess up, when they take the derivative of a secant, they know they get a secant tangent, but they write it incorrectly. So secant tangent, both of those are meaningless without an argument in the function. So we need to have the secant of the x cubed times the tangent of the x cubed. There's that secant tangent. Derivative of secant is a secant tangent, but both of those have to have the x cubed in them. And then we multiply by the derivative of the x cubed. We again have a composed function with some inner composing. So this is a little bit different because we have multiple compositions in here. So the first thing I hit is the tangent. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that derivative operator through the entire thing in order from left to right. And as I hit a rule, I'm going to apply it and then use the chain rule if there are nested ones inside. So the first thing I hit is this tangent. The derivative of tangent is a secant squared of the inside unchanged. 
the next thing I'm going to hit as I drag that operator forward is this inside. So the derivative of that whole thing inside the tangent needs to be inside parentheses. So that will be a 24x squared. I hit a constant, just pass through it. I hit a sine, that becomes a cosine of its inside unchanged. So now at the back of that one, I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside of the sine. Now I've completely dragged through the entire inside of the tangent, which means I'm going to close the parenthesis for multiplying this derivative times the inside's derivative. Some people get confused with where this 5 goes. The 5 was attached to the cosine because it was inside the sine, but the derivative of this entire thing needs to be attached to the tangent's derivative. That's why it's all in the green parentheses. So if we apply that same sort of concept here to our final g of t, the derivative of g the first rule we're going to hit is the e, so the e leaves things alone. Then we're going to multiply by the derivative of whatever was in that power. So in that power we have a cosecant rule that we hit first. So the derivative of cosecant is a negative cosecant cotangent and the inside of that cosecant cotangent has to stay the same. Now this needs to be multiplied by the derivative of what was inside the cosecant. So what was inside the cosecant was a t plus a 5e to the 4t. So I will hit the t then I'll hit the 5 and move through it, then I'll hit the e, which leaves things alone, and then I hit the inside of that e, which is going to multiply the e's derivative by 4. Then I can close what was inside the cosecant, and then I can close what was inside the outermost e. With our fifth example, I want to look at the chain rule in a numerical format. So we're given data in a table, and then based on that table, we want to compute derivatives of composed functions. So if we look at part A, the derivative of this square root of f is going to be running that derivative operator through, and as we hit, a rule, we have to apply it. So the first thing we hit is the root. Derivatives of roots are one half times whatever we took the root of raised to the negative one half times the derivative of that inside. And we want to now evaluate this when x is 2. So looking at the chart, I will have a 1 over a 2 times the square root of f of 2, which is an 8, and then I'm going to multiply by f prime of 2, which is 1 third. So if I simplify that, not that we have to, I would get a 4 root 2 times a 3, that's a 12 root 2 on the bottom, so you could leave it like that. If we look at part b, the first thing I'm going to hit when I take the derivative is that root. And I'm going to rewrite the inside as f of x squared plus g of x squared. So when I take the derivative, I will hit the outer root first, and the inside stays the same, raised to the negative one half, and then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this gets a little tricky because people forget that this inside is a function. So to take the derivative of this, I'll apply the power rule to f, and it'll be raised to the one power, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of the f. If I do the same thing with the g, I'll have two times those g's, times the derivative of the g. Now I want to evaluate that at 2, which means I'm going to plug in my values for 2 at each spot. That'll give me a 1 half, 
an f of 2, which is 8, a g of 2, which is 2, raised to the negative 1 half, times a 2 times an f times an f prime, plus a 2 times a g times a g prime, and you could leave it like that or simplify if you care. So we would get, let's see, that's a 16. You know what? I'm just going to leave it so that we can kind of track. I'll leave the simplification to you, the arithmetic. With part C, the last one, we can rewrite that as g of x raised to the negative 3 power. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I take the derivative of this, that will be the negative 3, we're applying that power rule to the inside unchanged, times the derivative of the inside. So I want to evaluate this at x equals 3. Will give me a negative 3 times g of 3 is a negative 4 raised to the negative fourth power times g prime of 3, which is 5. And again, I'll just let you leave it like that. With example 6, we have an object moving along the x-axis so that its position is given by this composed function. So here's an application involving particle motion, and we want the derivative of the x, because the derivative of the position will give us the velocity. So when we take the derivative, the first thing I hit is the cosine, so I apply the cosine rule with the inside unchanged, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. What I'd like you to do now is work on your notes web exam problems, and when you're finished, I would like you to explain why it makes sense that this particular derivative rule is called the chain rule. What do you know about chains that connects to composition of functions?